Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we are going to be doing is talking about GNOME. Now, I've recently gotten into GNOME ever since I tried out Fedora. Right now we are on Fedora Rawhide and we're gonna be checking out the up and coming GNOME 42. Ever since the GNOME 40 release, we had a lot of changes, a lot of visual changes, a lot of applications. We That was the switch to the horizontal uh, workflow, which I really liked. 41 had a lot of cool things. We had the connection app change some more general bug fixes and improvements. And GNOME 42 is coming with a lot more changes and upgrades a lot that are fairly dramatic. And we're gonna be covering those in this video. But before we dive too far into the system, actually check out some of the updates hands on, I'm gonna quickly run through some of the major highlights to get that out of the way. Big change is a lot of the applications and a lot of the uh, user interfaces now gonna be using GTK4. With a lot of the native applications being ported over to GTK4, just the overall appearance is gonna be a lot smoother and flat. A lot of the inconsistencies and things are going to be gone. So overall, it's gonna be a nice, clean, modern interface, more than it already was. Some of the changes that you're gonna notice in the GNOME shell include the removal of lighter colored borders, darker backgrounds, and brighter text in the shell elements. Additionally, there's a new system-wide dark theme we'll be diving into, some of the folders look phenomenal. And as far as applications, we have a new text editor. So with all that, let's go ahead and dive into our system here and check out some of these changes. Now this is a uh, Fedora Rawhide. So the background isn't the current default, but if we go into our system settings real quick, one, we'll be able to see some of the changes. What I'm going to do is put a picture of the old settings side by side with this real quick. And you can see a lot of the different elements and everything just stands out better. Everything's a lot cleaner. I think the switch from GTK3 to GTK4 is awesome. If we head over to appearance, you can see we have the light and dark style. So this is how I go ahead and switch everything over to the uh, dark theme. It changed the background too. If I go over here, this is the default dynamic wallpaper. So if I select this, it will switch to this dark purple and this lighter, well, this dark purple during the night and the lighter blue during the day. And the system-wide dark theme is huge. I mean, if we open up something like, let's open up the uh, App Store here real quick or the GNOME Software Center, you can see it's following that theme and just about everything will follow that theme. If I open up files here, you'll see that this is following that as well. And we have those new folder icons, which look awesome. It's a nice light to dark blue gradient. Looks really good. And some of the stuff I was talking about earlier in the intro, if I go over here to the GNOME shell, you can see just how much better some of the things stand out here. And instead of having any, uh, borders or anything around here. It's just a nice flat gray. It still pops out enough that it's easy to see that they're doing a wonderful job with this. And with this switch between light and dark theming, and you can see there, if I select this light, it switches the background here to the light version. Absolutely beautiful. This was originally introduced in elementary OS and the GNOME team kind of followed the lead. So it's really cool to see some of the influence cross distro per se, or cross environment. And a lot of this carries over like we saw if we go over here, let's go up to network for example. Just all these elements in this just are fantastic. Over here we have network proxy. So if I like clicked over here, what I could do is actually set up a proxy with the sponsor of today's video, Smart Proxy. <laughs> Smart Proxy is a platform that helps clients solve data access and entrepreneurship problems. Smart Proxy will let you rent IP addresses as proxies to help your social media accounts, websites, online marketing research, and more. Smart Proxy works by routing your requests to a target website through trustful mobile and desktop devices located in any country that you want. And while doing this, your IP address will be changed with each new request. With Smart Proxy, you have access to over 40 million residential IP addresses from 195 countries, eight major US cities, and all 50 US states. They support unlimited high quality connection requests, advanced IP rotating networks, where you can choose between sticky and rotating sessions. And you access this all through their customer friendly dashboard that lets you set up your proxies in no time. With a subscription, you'll also get access to the X browser and a Chrome and Firefox extension. All of this in addition to the unstoppable 99.9% .9 uptime and a fantastic customer support team. So go ahead, check out the link down below to learn more. So with that out of the way, what we're gonna do is talk about some of the uh, application changes. And the big thing is, is Gedit. Gedit is no more the one of the most popular and well-regarded text editors in Linux is not on the system anymore. And that's mostly true. It was replaced with basically 
a better version of Gedit, and that is the GNOME text editor. If I go ahead and give this an open, we can see it doesn't really look too much different from first impressions, but it really is. If I go ahead and go over here, we have our preference options. So we have new window, find replace. If I go over here and hit preferences, this is going to bring up some wonderful appearance options. So you can really have this match what you have your system theming or just personal preferences to look like. So I really like this one, for example, but this is up to what you like it to look like. We have the option for custom font. We have display grid pattern, so I can enable that if I wanted to highlight current line. I could do that if I want to. Uh, display overview map right here. We have right margin and we have some behavior options. If I close this out, you can kind of see what's going on here. We have that sidebar thing, like kind of what we've had in Kate for a while. Easily enable able in those preferences. Up here we have tabs. A lot of the stuff is the same. And with, with the colors, like if I go like this, I change this to a markdown file real quick. It will follow the uh, proper color and markdown syntax for whatever color scheme you chose in the actual color preferences. Now a feature that is new, if I go over here to open, we can open our recent documents. If I hit, I believe it's control K, this will allow you to open up the same thing. This is my first document, so it's not gonna show any recent documents, but if I use this a lot and I had a lot of things in here, it'd be really easy to go ahead and search things, or I can hit open and this will bring up this open prompt here and then I can open up this little test markdown file that I've made, which is already open. So with that, that's the uh, primary changes with this. If I click over here, we have some of the basic stuff. I can show the spaces. We have text wrapping. I can change the document type, check spelling. We can edit things such as the spaces per tab if we would like to. And then we can show the different uh, line numbers or margins. So if you wanted line numbers, which is very helpful, you can include those. And then up here, we have our line and column that we are currently on. So with that, the next thing is a improved screen capture utility. So if I get rid of that and let's go over here, we have take a screenshot. If I hit enter, we can check out this nice new interface right here. So here is where my actual screenshot is. I could go ahead and move this around as I please. I could take a full screen or a window. And down here, this is new. We can have the option to switch over to a... Uh, a screencast instead and actually record a little video. So if I did that, for example, right here, we have the option to uh, show the pointer. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if I hit record here, you can see it, it has a, uh, a highlighted area around. It's a little laggy. This is in a uh, virtual environment. So uh, bear with it real quick while it's a little choppy here. There we go. We are now screen recording. And then if we look up here in the top, we could go ahead and stop our screen recording just by clicking there and the screen cast was recorded. So let's go ahead and show that in files. There it is. It recorded it as a WebM file. So I can open that up and we can see the little screen recording I just made and brought in the files, the window or the uh, cursor showing. It's a fantastic little utility, especially if you want to do something real quick and easy and you don't want to fumble around and open up OBS. So when it comes to changes in GNOME 42, that is basically it. There are some other general bug fixes and things like that. I'm going to be linking to an article from It's Foss and an article from OMG Ubuntu. The OMG Ubuntu one is really nice at comparing what the actual differences in the shells and the It's Foss one is a, a good rundown of some of the general feature changes that we covered in this video. If you want to go ahead and try this out for yourself, if you're currently on Linux, you could go ahead and get uh, GNOME boxes and try it out on GNOME OS. Alternatively, you could do what I did and use the Rawhide version of Fedora that is currently shipping with GNOME 42. Uh, links to those down below as well. So with that, big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are fantastic. Um, yeah, thank you to Smart Proxy for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Uh, with all that, I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.